Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope that you all had a great week last week and a great weekend. Today is Monday, March 15th. If this is your first time to my channel, welcome. If this is not your first time, welcome back. Um, I have a couple of announcements first. So first of all, I am going to say that my mug finally came in. This is my Jesus and Coffee Conversations mug and I'll bring it up so you guys can get a better look at it. But this is the front and then the back of it. So that finally came in and I have it so you guys can see what it looks like. Also, I got in my Jesus and Coffee Conversations shirt. I'll back up so you can see it. It is a loose fitting shirt. Um, very comfortable. So I will make sure as always I put the link in the description box below so that you can go to Teespring and order your very own Jesus and Coffee Conversations mug or shirts. And I also have um, some other shirts in that I will be wearing in the video so that you guys can um, see some of the different shirts, not all of them, but some of the different shirts that I offer and how they fit. And then you can go and order your very own. Also, I am finally <laughs> hands free. So I am so excited about that because it is very difficult to because I taught with my hands and it's difficult to do that when I am holding the phone or the camera So I'm finally hands-free I can talk with my hands the way that I want to and if I need a break or whatever I can drink my coffee and all of that great stuff So that is um, all the announcements that I have I'm gonna go ahead and get started with prayer first Father God, I thank you Lord for bringing us together again for another video. I thank you Lord for anointing their ears so that they hear what it is that you need them to hear, Father God. I bind right now in the name of Jesus all distractions and interruptions. And I thank you, Lord, for speaking freely through me. I will say whatever it is that you want me to say, Father God. And I thank you for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so from the title... I am going to be talking to you about do you believe in God? So I'm going to start with the definition of believe first and it is defined as to accept something as true, to feel sure of the truth. And some synonyms are trust and have confidence in. And a lot of people kind of faith and belief um, kind of go hand in hand. So a lot of people kind of get confused about the two because they are similar but they're different. So I'm also going to give you the definition of faith. And faith is complete trust or confidence in someone or something. And um, so belief is when we are convinced about something. So maybe it's things that our experiences have taught us. Or maybe, um, for instance, like our faith. We believe in God. We believe that God created um, the entire universe. Or, you know, if maybe it's been cold all week. So you before you even go outside and check the weather or you listen to the weather report, you believe that today is going to be cold because it's been cold all week. Um, or maybe like your parents, you believe what your parents tell you because you believe that they would not lie to you because they are your parents. So that is belief. And then faith is similar, but faith requires action. And I'm going to read James chapter 2 verse 17 as the Amplified Version. And it reads, so also faith, if it does not have works, deeds, and actions of obedience to back it up, by itself is a destitute, is a destitute of power or is inoperative or, or dead. So basically, faith without works is dead. Um, so, you know, you can't have faith without putting some kind of action behind it. So maybe you have faith that God is going to... Um, a bless your business. If you don't do what you know to do, then that's not going to happen. Or if you um, have faith that you're going to lose weight, if you don't put down the donuts and pick up some celery and some fruits and vegetables and hit the gym and drink your water, you're not going to lose weight. So you have faith that you're going to lose weight. But if you don't put in the work necessary to lose that weight, you're not going to lose the weight. So that is the difference between faith and believing. Faith requires action. And then believing is just something that you believe in your heart or you know in your heart or mind to be true. And so basically from the title of the video is, do you believe God? If God says that he is going to do something for you or do something in your life, 
do you really believe that he's going to do it? Or are you just, you know, yeah, God, I hear you. And maybe you believe it for a day or two days, you know, maybe a week. But you don't really deep down believe that he's going to come through for you or provide for you. And an example of that would be Sarah with Abraham. When God told Abraham that he was going to bless him and Sarah with the son of their own through their own, um, you know, conception, Sarah didn't believe that that was going to happen. And Sarah was in her 90s. Abraham was in his 100s. And because Sarah did not believe, I keep moving this table, making this noise over here. Sorry about that. But anyway, so Sarah did not believe that it was going to happen. So she tried to make it happen in her own way, which was to tell Abraham to marry her servant girl, Hagar, and to have sex with her. And then he could get his um, son that way. And that was not God's plan. God plan was you guys are going to come together you're going to conceive and have a son yourself and because Sarah didn't believe that she you know did what she she tried to play God and make things happen you know through her own power and it completely messed you know some things up so if God says that he's going to do something you got to trust and know that God is going to do it all the promises in the Bible are promises that God made to us, his children, and he is going to fulfill those promises. God is not a man that he will lie. God cannot and will not lie. If he said he's going to do it, or he said something is going to happen, then best believe that he's going to do it, and whatever he said is going to happen will happen. It's just in his time frame. And what happens is, like Sarah, we get impatient, or we don't believe it, and we try to make it happen on our own, and that can cause disaster in our lives because we're trying to make it happen in our own. And we don't know what is going to happen. God knows everything. He can see, you know, in our futures and can see that the, the things that we're trying to make happen on our own, it completely destroy us and completely mess up our lives. And so that's why we are to trust him. And you have to trust him. You have to be patient. And I know it's hard. I'm waiting on God right now for some things. I'm believing God for some things right now. And it's hard, especially when you've been waiting, you know, for more than a year or two, like I have been waiting. It gets difficult. And you do at times begin to doubt, okay, is it gonna happen? And when is it gonna happen? Like, is it my time yet? I see everybody else, you know, it's happening for everybody else, but it hasn't happened for me yet. And it's just, it can be discouraging, but you just have to, in those moments, just keep reminding yourself like, I have to keep reminding myself that God is God. His plan is best. I just have to trust his plan and just stay on the path or the course that he has me on right now. And then when the time is right, then everything that I'm believing for and everything that he said he's going to do for me will manifest. But also, things don't happen on our timetable because we think we're ready for it. But in reality, we're not. And God understands that if I give you know, them this thing, it's going to keep them from pursuing me. It's going to keep them from having a relationship with me. Or if I give them this thing, they're going to idolize it. And then it's going to be the God in their life and move me out of the way. And that is what God does not want. God is a jealous God. Like he will get rid of people, things, whatever in your life. If you are putting it before him. And also, that's also why it takes time to get the things that we want because God is like, can I trust you with where you are right now? Can I trust you with what you have right now before I give you whatever it is that you're praying and asking me for? And a lot of times when you get the thing that you've been praying and asking for, you forget all about God. You forget about spending that time with him or maybe, you know, if you're not ready for it, you mess it up like relationships you want a relationship relationships take work especially when you're married it's a lot of work it's not rainbows and sunshine every day you have to die to yourself every day you have to submit to your husband ladies men you have to know how to lead your family meaning that you're being led by God and if you have problems with that then your marriage more than likely is not going to last or work out for you and so God, before he sends you that man or that woman, God has to prune you and get you prepared for that. 
Can God trust you to follow him and be faithful to him and submit to him while you're single? If you struggle with that while you're single and you can't submit and listen to and follow God, how are you going to submit, listen to and follow your husband? How are you, ladies, how are you going to, you know, submit to your husband? Men, how are you going to lead your wife? How are you going to be able to communicate and talk things out if you can't even have a normal you know, disagreement or conversation with a coworker. If you're cursing your coworker out, then that's what you're gonna do to your husband or wife. That's not being godly and that's not having a godly marriage the way that God intended it. Are you gonna make mistakes and maybe cuss your spouse out? It's possible, depending on, you know, how heated the argument and things get. But if you're used to not doing that and you're getting your practice and stuff now with your coworkers or your family members or your friends or whoever it is that you are disagreeing with now if you can conquer your anger while you're single then when you're married it won't be a problem for you so you have to just know that god knows best it's not our timetable it's his timetable it's always his timetable and god is always on time we might feel like it's taking forever and in the cases a lot of times it does take forever but God's timing is perfect God understands things where we don't his thoughts are higher than our thoughts and his ways are higher than our ways so to him yes I've been waiting for him to manifest some things in my life for two years now but to him that two years is probably just two days in his eyes because he, he operates outside of time and space. So we're in time and space, but God is outside of time and space. So years and days and months and hours and minutes, all of that means nothing to God. So you have to be patient and you have to believe that God is going to do what he said he's going to do. And if you think about in the New Testament where, um, and I have to get that description for you later. I should have had it here, but it just came to me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Um, but the scripture where Jesus where the um, man whose son is a lunatic, I believe, but he, or I can't remember that he was a lunatic, but I think he was a lunatic, but the spirit would, you know, convulse him, make him fall down on the ground, roll him around, he'll, you know, throw him in the fire or in the water, you know, or that kind of stuff. And the man took the boy to the disciples and they couldn't cast the demon out. And so the man went to Jesus and he was like, look, I went to your disciples over here and they couldn't help me. So I'm bringing him to you because I know that you'll make it happen. And so, you know, Jesus cast the demon out and the boy was fine. And then the disciples were like, well, why couldn't we do it? Like, you know, we follow you. We listen to you. Why couldn't we cast the demon out? And Jesus was saying, basically, no, I'm sorry. Let me back it up. So the father was saying, you know, Jesus, can you help my son? And then Jesus told the father, if you believe, then I can. And the father said that, you know, I believe help me with my unbelief or my disbelief. Same thing. Um, and so you have to believe when you go to God, you have to believe that God is going to do what it is that you're asking him to do for you. Because if you don't have belief, you don't believe that he's going to do it. And then you don't have your faith to back up the actions with that belief. It's not going to happen. It's not going to manifest for you. So the man was saying that he believes, but help him with his unbelief. And the disciples too, they probably didn't think that they could do it. They probably, you know, were trying it and saying in the name of Jesus. And then what happened is the demon took a hold of the boy and the boy probably fell to the ground, started running around or foaming at the mouth or, you know, whatever. And so the disciples probably, maybe not saying it out loud, but in their mind, thinking, okay, this is not working. Like, look what's going on. He's not coming out you know what we're saying we must be saying it wrong so they're downing within themselves probably and that's probably why the demon would not listen to them and come out and then also jesus said you have to pray and fast like there are certain demons that only will come out if you are praying and you are fasting and that's why it's important to pray fast. not so you can cast the demons out i'm not telling anybody to be like the sons of, the seven sons of skiva and go out casting demons and you know <laughs> You end up getting hurt in the process. I'll put that scripture below too so you can read it. But I'm not saying go around trying to cast out demons, but I'm saying that if you are, if that is your ministry, you have to, first of all, have faith and belief that you can do it. And then you need to be praying and fasting because it's no joke. When you get face to face with demons, it is nothing to play around with. You need to be prayed up, fasted up, and full of the Holy Spirit. 
and walk in your power and authority to get the results that you're supposed to get as a child of God. But I don't know how I got off on that subject, but basically I'm talking about believing God. So you have to believe God. If God said that I am going to be your provider and you get a foreclosure notice in the mail or you get something about your credit card about to get you know canceled because you're missing payments or whatever it is you have to go to god and say god you said that you are jehovah my pro Jar you are jehovah jireh my provider so i'm expecting you god to provide for me i'm expecting you god to pay off my house I'm expecting you guys to send a check in the mail so that I can make this payment to avoid foreclosure. Or I'm trusting you guys that you're going to send a check in the mail so that I can pay this credit card bill so that my credit card doesn't get canceled and so my you know credit score doesn't get jacked up. Or if God says you know that he's your healer, that's a promise that he's going to be your provider and that he's going to be your healer. So when you get sick, you go to the doctor, you get a bad doctor support. Yes, naturally you are going to cry and you are going to be scared and you are going to have that pity party for a moment But then you need to suck up those tears and stop the crying and talk to your body And whatever disease is trying to attack you and say no cancer You can't have my body because God you said that by Jesus stripes that I am healed So cancer you cannot be in my body. You got to leave my body right now in the name of Jesus when I go back to the doctor for a second um opinion they're not going to find any trace of cancer i rebuke that cancer in the name of jesus and you believe what you say you believe that god is going to heal you and then you back it up with your actions by walking and talking like you're healed don't go around telling people i went to the doctor i got a bad report that said i got cancer i don't know what i'm gonna do i'm not ready to die and all that don't do that that's making the devil know that, uh-huh, they're reacting this way, so I got that, and now that's my weapon that I'm going to use to try to take them out. Don't give the devil no ammunition to use against you. You watch the words that come out of your mouth, because if you are claiming that cancer or that whatever the disease is, if you're claiming it, then the devil is going to use that, and th that is what he's going to use to take you out. You need to speak the words of faith and the words of belief that I am healed in the name of Jesus. So if God says that, I'm going to send you your husband. I have a husband for you that is my best for you. I'm going to send him to you. Don't expect God to deliver that man to you the next day. More than likely, that's not how it's going to happen. It's going to take some time and it's going to take some process. And I know because I'm in that boat right now, <laughs> I'm waiting and believing in God for my husband. It's not going to happen overnight. There's a lot of things that God has to work on through, you know, with you first before he can bring that man to you but are you going to believe that god has somebody for you or are you going to take the first person that comes smiling and grinning in your face or are you going to take the first person that sends you that dm on instagram or facebook so you got to understand that the devil knows the things that you're praying for too and he got sons out here that he can't wait to send to you to jack up your life or if you're a man watching this he got daughters that he can't wait to send across your path to mess up your life so you have to listen to God and be in tune with the Holy Spirit. Don't get so desperate and thirsty to get a man or get a woman that you end up with the devil's son or daughter. You need to listen and trust God. When that man or woman comes smiling and grinning in your face, you need to pause and say, okay, God, is this man from you? Is this woman from you? And then you should be so in tune with the Holy Spirit that you can hear before you even say anything. You'll hear the Holy Spirit say, uh-uh, that -uh, he's not it or she's not it. And then you can say, no, I'm sorry. I'm, you know, if they ask you for your phone number, I'm sorry, I'm in a relationship. You're not lying because you're in a relationship with God. So you need to be in tune with the Holy Spirit to avoid the traps of the enemy. And you need to believe that God is going to send you that man and he's going to send you that husband. If God says that he is going to bless you, you know, in his word, he said he that, you know, you have houses that you didn't build. Do you really believe that? Do you believe the things that are in this book? Do you believe that Jesus died for your healing? Do you believe that Jesus died? you know, all the sins that you committed and have yet to commit, that Jesus died for all of those sins and you're forgiven for all of those sins. Do you believe that God is the God of the universe and there is nothing off limits when it comes to his children? 
do you really believe that or are you just giving lip service where you're saying I believe it but you really don't believe it the moment you get hit with a test or a child you're falling apart you're crawling under the bed under the covers ready to you know cry yourself to sleep at night or you just staying up all night worrying over stuff stop losing your sleep at night over stuff that you cannot control you cannot control people you cannot control circumstances a lot of times sometimes you might be able to to control circumstances depending on what it is but nine times out of ten the things you worry about are things that are completely out of your control anyway and you are losing sleep worrying about things that you have no control over so you need to give that that thing whatever it is to God and then trust and believe that God is going to come through for you if your bills if you're struggling to make ends meet instead of staying up at night worrying about how you're gonna pay this bill or pay that bill Give it to God and say, God, I give it to you. I give you my finances. I need you to come through for me. You say you're Jehovah Jireh, my provider. You provide for me. You said in Malachi 3.10, if I pay my tithes and my offerings and I give you the first fruits of my increase, that I can test you. That's the only time that God says to test him and what he says. And that is, if I bring my tithes and my offerings to you, the first fruits of my increase, that you're going to open the windows of heaven for me. You're going to pour me out a blessing that I don't have room enough to receive it. So you've got to remind God of his word and stop worrying and falling apart at the first sign of trouble. So I hope that you guys got something out of this video. Thank you again for watching. Make sure that you share the video. Make sure you like the video by pressing the thumbs up button. And make sure that you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I also, like I said, will make sure that I put the um, link for the t-shirts and the coffee mugs in the description box below. And I also will put in the scripture that I read, James 2, 17, the scripture about the man with the son who is demon possessed, and the scripture about the seven sons of Sceva, so that you guys can read all of that. Please also make sure that you follow me on Instagram. If you have an Instagram account, that's in the description box as well, and also on Facebook. That will be in the description box along with the link for my blog. So again, thank you so much for joining me and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.